All right, now what I want to show you is something that a good friend of mine has been asking me all year long to please include in these movies. So I would like to say, JT, here it is. This is way too important to leave out. All right. Now, in today's world, there are many people who do believe that Elvis impersonators can sound exactly like Elvis. Now, I believe that this is simply not true. I have watched many of these guys, and there is a lot of them who can sound pretty close. They sound a lot like Elvis. There's no doubt about it. But no one can sound exactly like Elvis. But there has been impersonators that I believe, such as Jimmy Ellis, Doug Church, Jim the King Brown, and I'm sure there was more that has went out and lip sync on stage to this music that Elvis has recorded. Now, I believe because of this, people in the world just, they were fooled. Instead of seeing what was really going on here, they just assumed that someone could sound exactly like Elvis Presley. Alright, I believe that this all started back in 1969. Well, at least, this is where it began. In 1969, there was a young man who would later become one of America's top comedians. And he hitchhiked to Las Vegas to see Elvis Presley, who was playing at the Hilton. Now, he did not do this because he wanted to see Elvis perform. He wanted to meet the king of rock and roll. So, what this young man did was hitchhike to Vegas. He got to the Hilton and he had a gallon jug. And he went in to the Hilton to the delivery area where they delivered food. And once he got in, then he hid in a closet. And he hid there for a few hours and he waited and when Elvis and his bodyguards came walking by this young man jumped out he jumped out at Elvis now we are told that at this point Elvis's bodyguards pulled out the guns and everything and Elvis seeing that this was just a young kid and Elvis told the guys to put the guns down that this kid ain't no threat. Now, this young man, he told Elvis, he said, Mr. Presley, I am your biggest fan. And someday, I want to be famous like you. Now we are told that Elvis, he put his hand on this young man's shoulder and he said, I believe that will happen. Now, two years later, this young man, Andy Kaufman, was the hottest cabaret act in New York City. Now, I believe what actually took place here was this gave Elvis an opportunity to see if he could send someone out on stage and lip sync to music that Elvis recorded in a studio. And I believe that he took Andy Kaufman in and started working with him. And Elvis and Andy Kaufman would go in the studio, Elvis would sing 
and Andy Kaufman would do the talking. And from these recordings, it sounds like they had a lot of fun doing this. But once the recordings were done, they sent Andy Kaufman to the stage to lip sync to this music. And they even put Andy Kaufman on nationwide TV to do this, to see if they could get away with it. And the people of America, the people of the world, did not catch on. They just assumed that someone could sound exactly like Elvis Presley. Instead of seeing what was really going on here, people were fooled. And this has continued all throughout the years. So, what I've got for you now is a video of Andy Kaufman on the Johnny Cash Show. Thank you very much. You know, Elvis Presley, Elvis Presley once said that of all of the Elvis imitators, the one that he enjoyed the most is our guest, Andy Kaufman. Andy Kaufman. Welcome, Andy. Thank you very much. Yeah. Andy, uh, what, do you, what do you want this well, time? I would like to do, to? I would like to do for you some imitations. Okay. Which you already did an imitation of Santa Claus, remember? Yeah, but that was a, a stu stupid because uh, I was wearing the red suit, and you know anyone can can do it. Could do that. All you do is you say ho ho ho. Oh, you do, huh? Yeah, you Merry Christmas. Oh, you do. Yeah, yeah, you know. But this time I have imitations. It's better. Oh, well, good. I'd like to see you do them. Okay. okay. First, I'd like to do for, for you, Johnny Cash. I'd like to do Johnny Cash. Imitation of me? Yeah, Johnny Cash. Oh, okay. okay. Hi, I'm Johnny Cash. <laughs> okay, bye-bye. Thank you. Now, I'd like to do the um, mini pearl. Howdy! Thank you very much. Thank you very much. And now, last but not to be the least, I would like to do for you the uh, Elvis Presley. First record I ever made, I had to pay uh, four dollars to make it. I was walking down the street, it was a record store that said anyone can make a record. So I went in there and I made it for my mom's birthday. And one side was called My Happiness, and the other side was a ballad. And uh, later became a big record for me on RCA Victor Records. It was called That's When Your Heartaches Begin, and it went something like this. If you find your sweetheart Here we are, no thank you That's when your heart aches begin When of a lifetime but has come to an end That's when your heart aches 
Find your sweetheart in the arms of your best friend, brother. That's that's when your heart aches. Begin. You know when all your dreams, when all your dreams of a lifetime. Are all come to an end. Yeah, that's that's when your heart aches. Begin. For you see, love is a thing. That you never can share. And when you bring a friend oh, into your love affair, Just sing it, Andy Kaufman on the Johnny Cash Show. Now, we just heard Johnny Cash tell us that Elvis used to say that Andy Kaufman was one of his favorite Elvis impersonators. Now, I believe that Elvis himself was trying to get people's attention. He was trying to give us a very big heads up. Two. If the day should ever come where they did have to remove him from the public's eye, I believe he was trying to show us here how the music would continue. You know, Elvis was an active agent for our government for quite some time before the world was told that Elvis Presley died. And I believe that he knew that the day could possibly come where they would have to remove him from the public's eye. I believe that he was working on ways to, if they should ever had to do what they did do, he was working on ways that they could continue to release music out to the fans. And I believe that here, when we are told that Elvis used to say Andy Kaufman was his favorite Elvis impersonator. I believe he was trying to get everybody's attention to Andy Kaufman so that we could see that something was going on here. True Elvis fans, I believe that when you listen to someone who is lip syncing to recordings, you just got that feeling that something is not right. That yes, it appears to be that Elvis Presley did record this music. Now, this was way before the days of Millie Vanilli, and I believe that most people at the time just 
more not able to catch on to see what was really going on here. Okay, what I've got for you now is another video of Andy Kaufman, this time on the Johnny Carson Show. So, here it is. Here's Andy. I would like to do for you some imitations. So first, I would like to imitate Archie Bunker. <laughs> you stupid. Everybody's so stupid. You, you meathead, get out of my chair. You ding back, go in the kitchen, make me the food. Everybody's so stupid. I don't like nobody so stupid. Thank you very much. <laughs> And now, I would like... It's good? I, I, would, like, I would like to imitate uh, Ed McMahon. And now, he's Johnny. Ha, ha, ha. <laughs> no, how hot was it? <laughs> ha, 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 ha. Thank you very much. <laughs> now, last but not to be the least, I would like to imitate the Elvis Presley. Could, could I have my, uh, my thing? All right, Elvis Presley. Thank you very much. <laughs> Treat the mill like a fool. Treat me mean and crude. But love me. Bring them off a beautiful heart. Thank you. 
you can all just stare at me when I catch my breath. <laughs> this is Gatorade. Works ten times faster than water, so uh, if I run off the stage in the middle of the show, don't worry, I'll be right back. <laughs> All right, one of the, I'll have to sing one of my biggest records for you. Of course, all of them the same size. <laughs> one of the first songs I ever recorded was back in 1927, I think it was. <laughs> so it went something like this. Wait a minute, wait a minute. <laughs> something wrong with my lip. <laughs> well, it's the one for the money, two for the show. To get a red and I go carry it, don't you? Step on my boots, be a chew, but Waking up and everything, put it down for my boots, be a chew. Can knock me down, step on my face, sign up my name all over the place. I do anything that you want to do, but I'm a honey, lay off my shoes and don't you? Step on my boots, be a chew, but Thank you very much. All right, there it was. Andy Kaufman on the Johnny Carson Show. Now, I believe that when you really pay attention to to the music that we just saw that you can clearly tell that yes Elvis Presley is singing these songs now like I said I do believe that Elvis Presley and Andy Kaufman both went into the recording studio and made these recordings and at the time they did this they were trying to see if they could do this if they could get away with it, if people would catch on. Now, at this time, I believe that it was a little harder to figure out than it has been in more recent years. I believe that, yes, Andy Kaufman was doing the talking, doing his comedy dialogue, and I also believe that Andy Kaufman was singing parts of these songs along with Elvis Presley, but I believe that it's very clear that Elvis Presley is the one who is singing these songs that Andy Kaufman was on stage performing to. Andy Kaufman was only lip syncing, and back when this was going on, the world just did not catch on, and because of this, this gave Elvis a way to release music out to the fans for several years after the world was told that Elvis Presley died. Alright, 